Graham Mack on BBC Radio Derby. It's not just the Brits who are going mad for news of the royal baby. Over in America, they can't get enough of it either. I was asked by a radio station in North Carolina to talk about the birth. Hey, welcome along to the Brad and Brit Show. We're so glad you are here. In uh, a few minutes, we'll talk to an old friend of ours, Graham Mack, who has uh, worked at all the great radio stations, the breakfast shows, the afternoon drive shows in Australia, England, BBC. He's got uh, good cred on this. Yes. Meanwhile, in Atlanta, Georgia, there are royalists there, too. Don Anthony is a media executive and publisher. How are you, Don? Graham, how are you, my friend? I'm very good, mate. Very good. Good to talk to you. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. How is it being reported there? Graham, I think the reality is we don't have a, a royal, you know, we, we don't have a royal family. And so we have always adopted uh, your family as ours, so we, we tag on to it. I, I can't imagine what you and I were talking during the, uh, uh, when uh, Duchess uh, Kate uh, was, you know, first announcing, and, and just all these things happening, just when, when they got married. It was like no bigger story. It's always wonderful to follow it's very exciting and uh you know we feel when we're following these stories we feel like for that moment in time we have our own you know uh real family however vicariously we live through it you know if your forefathers hadn't chucked all that tea into the water in boston you might still have a royal family don <laughs> good point I'll, I'll, I'll make note of it in the future when somebody's asking it's a little bit divided here not everybody is a royalist and there are degrees do you find that in the states too yeah i mean you know you always have the you know what you, you, radio, television, media, there's always going to be those that boast about it and others that, you know, jump on and make a comment one way or the other. But, you know, for the most part, I mean, most people have been, I can't speak for all Americans, but I think they've been very respectful and very responsive. Now, you've been around for the birth of royals and heirs to the throne before. Is it bigger this time? Because it seems it. It does. It does seem that way. I think part of it has been because of the... Um, so much, you know, so, so, so much of the following with the, with, with the prince and the, and the duchess, um, they're, they're wonderfully popular. So I think that, you know, people see them as a really true, great family. Uh, they seem like regular people. And, uh, you know, and so people feel more comfortable following them. And then they're having, a, they're having a baby, and so there's all this news and what. So I think that, yeah, they, uh, it's, you know, it goes back to the days of Princess Diana. I mean, you know, there's this... Uh, thing again where we are uh, this is pro well before your time but back when uh, John Kennedy was president and his wife Jacqueline uh, she was like the closest thing we actually had to royalty uh, at least in the minds of many people you know back then she was so you know she had this very flair about her and and, uh, uh, and so I think that suddenly you know fast forward to now and we have uh, you know this this wonderful uh, Duke and Duchess or uh, Prince and Duchess and so it's it's wonderful to follow and when I visit there next, you're going to take me to all these places, correct? I'll take you there, Don, yeah. You've been so good Despite to me. Well, what did, what did, the, Roy, what did the, um, um, the palace look like last night? The palace looked, well, was, there was thousands of people outside. But the whole city, where they lit up the big tower, the big BT tower. They had that in blue, and it's a boy. And they, they lit the fountains in uh, Trafalgar Square blue, because it was a boy. And I'm guessing they had pink lights on standby as well. So the whole city really, uh, really uh, got into it. And, and where we are right now in Derby, the cathedral bells rang, which is actually how I found out, because I was <laughs> offline for a little while, and I suddenly heard the cathedral bells, and I thought, I bet there's been an announcement. Yeah. Is that always been the way that, that that's, a, that's a tradition? Goes back to the 14th century. I, I spoke to the curus of the cathedral today. You'll hear him a little bit later on if you're listening online, Don. I will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to tune in later and be sure to do that. Fantastic. Uh, Don Anthony is in Atlanta, Georgia, great friend of radio. I know there are a lot of radio people around the world who have been inspired by your work. You've got Morning Show Boot Camp coming up. Someone wants to get more information about you, Don. What do they have to do? Uh, you know, it's, it, it, really, you can go to a couple of places. They can go to um, our website. Uh, which is themorningmouth.com. Themorningmouth.com. Uh, yeah. Or they can email. In fact, anybody listening that took a picture, that wonderful picture you described at the palace last night, if you happen to have one and want to send it to me, my email address is themouth at tds.net. That would be like Tom David Shirley dot net. Uh, I'd love to get some photographs. And if they're good, you'll, pu you'll publish them. they're not copyrighted, okay, please? Okay, okay. and you'll publish them in, in your publication. Morning well, I'd like to use one because, you know, one, one of the things, I think you know this, we have a publication that has no boundaries. 
uh, we cover, you know, uh, the latest news from all over the world. And, and uh, you know, with, uh, thank goodness you've been a, a regular contributor. So we actually get a chance to see, you know, radio and broadcasting from throughout the world and not just, you know, to a limited, in a limited scope. Don Anthony, thank you so much. Graham, my pleasure. Thank you so much uh, in return. Talk no worries at all. Talk to you next time. Don Anthony, he's a good bloke, yeah, and he'll be putting that publication together with what radio stations around the world are saying about the uh, royal wedding. Well, not long after the royal baby was born last night, you may have seen and heard a town crier announcing the news outside the hospital. Well, since then, he's become an international multimedia celebrity. He's been on radio stations and TV stations all around the world. His name is Tony Appleton. Good evening, Tony. Good evening, G. How are you? Very good, mate. Let's start at the beginning, then. How did you become a town crier? Um, I came a town crier 25 years ago. I've got the manorial rights of my village, and one day I was walking around in my robes, opening a fate, and a little young lad came up to me. He said, here, mate. He said, you look like a town crier. Three days later, the phone rang, and a chap said to me, Tony, I know you're a professional toastmaster. You don't have a town cry, you'll be met then. I said, yeah, you're talking to one. And that's how I got into it. And that was that, you were, you were the right place at the right time. See, so much of show business is just showing up. That's right, yes, <laughs> isn't it? And that's all, all happened, all accidentally. So wh which village is this? How far away are you from London? Uh, I'm 30 miles from London, and I'm, I'm called the village of Great Baddow. It's, uh, uh, Chelmsford has now been uh, classed as a city, so with the city, city of Chelmsford, which is three miles from myself, and London about 30 miles. So none of this is official, though, is it? Oh, what? Me? No, 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 I'm not official. No. That, uh, what happened last night, a lot of people don't know, and I've come clean. What happened was, I had a tip-off that the baby was being born. I was in a hotel in London with all my uh, regalia on. I hot-footed into a taxi, jumped out the taxi with my, my scroll, and done the proclamation, and that's what happened. And, and the next minute, you're, you're an international superstar. Oh, it's, the phone has not stopped ringing here <laughs> this afternoon from America. Australia, news all over the world. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Do you know how many TV and radio interviews you've done since last night? I've done ten. What I've done was I've done ten outside the, uh, the, the hospital with, and I had to do the same cry, so consequently I've lost my voice now. You've done, you've done the same cry again and again and again for, for different media outlets around. For the media like they were, please, one more, one more. Oh, my God, you know. Because I got tipped off by a friend in Seattle, Washington, who'd had you. The Bob Rivers Show had you yeah, in Seattle, Yeah, good Bob Rivers. Yeah, good rule off of them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're a good team, aren't they? Oh, they're really fun, yeah. They're, really, they're enjoying themselves out there. <laughs> w were they the most memorable of all the interviews you've done since last night? Yeah, I mean, I've got to be honest, I've done several all over the years. I mean, uh, I was in the Olympics. That was very, very exciting. But this one has topped the whole lot, I'm afraid. really has knocked everything out of the way. And, uh, you know, this is like a new era for me. I mean, uh... I'm so proud and humble what actually happened that I've been actually part of the Royal Birth, as you might say. Oh, a big part of it, yeah. Did you have any idea how popular this would make you? No, I really didn't know it'd be like this. I knew, you know, but I, I've looked at um, eight newspapers and I'm on page three of every eight page of eight newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get my voice back at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with that. Just so, so be nice and quiet, Tony. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> yeah, on. It's a bit difficult to do that in my profession. Uh, well, yeah, I'm glad you could spare the time and tell us all about your newfound fame. <laughs> okay, then. Town crier, Tony Appleton. You saw him on the TV last night. There's no way you could have avoided him. Well, there he is right now on BBC Radio Derby. It's the Brad and Brit Show. I'm Brad Krantz. He's Britt Whitmire. And this is Graham Mack talking to us from the home of... The person who's now third in line to the uh, British crown, right. Prince Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Somebody. Is there betting on the name? I, I can bet on anything in England. Can you bet on the name of the kid? Yeah, I'll give you the uh, the odds, actually. The latest odds, which I've just checked. The uh, the name of the baby to be called George is 2 to 1. That's the favorite name. Second is James at 3 to 1. And you can get 4 to 1 on Alexander. Outside that, uh, there are no Brads and no Brits. Uh, I checked. And, and, and get, but hey, it might it'd be worth it. Be worth maybe just a quid or something, you know? Because yeah. it'll be such long odds. You know, you might as well just have a bet. Now, are there any cur curmudgeons, contrarians? I mean, I, we see all the people out on the streets celebrating and having a good time. Are there just uh, any old guys or any people walking around? Oh, you 
go back to work and go back into your homes. Any anybody like that you know, walking around? You know us too well. You know us too well. Yeah, and there are people. Uh, the radio station I was on today, uh, because you know we've been waiting all day since this morning. I mean, um, you, you you got the morning a lot later than us. We've been waiting since she she went into hospital early in the morning, just after six a.m. And of course, we don't get this announcement till after eight. We have had news people milking this with nothing to say all day. <laughs> So after about the fourth hour, people were starting to tweet and text us saying, like, will you shut up? Nothing's <laughs> happening. You're just dragging this out. Because <laughs> well, this is absolutely nothing happening. Well, we, we had this uh, over the weekend, uh, Graham. It was called Waiting for the George Zimmerman Verdict. <laughs> That's right. That was oh, the week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Two days of yeah. people saying nothing and adding nothing to the conversation. So there, there were just this group of people after a while, oh, get on with it, for God's sakes. Right? Yeah. Ex yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I found out in a, in a, in a really kind of traditional way because, like, I'm not in, in London today. I'm, doing, I'm guest hosting on a, on a drive show in a place called Derby, which is about 200 miles north of London. So gotcha. I drove up uh, in the morning. To, I've been at the radio station all day. Then I went on the air between 4 and 7. And then I checked into my hotel. And just after 8 o'clock... I heard the cathedral church bells ringing, ah. and I suddenly realized I know why that is. Now, this, this cathedral in Derby has been ringing the bells for the birth of royals and coronations and everything since the 14th century. Right. And like weirdly, you know, here I am in broadcasting and also hooked onto Twitter and Facebook and everything, but I literally found out about the royal birth the old-fashioned way by the church bells of the cathedral ringing. So I think that's kind of nice. That is kind of nice. All right, final question, Graham. Which is a bigger deal, the birth of this baby or Andy Murray winning Wimbledon? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I'd say in England, the birth of the baby. The Scots wouldn't think the same because Andy Murray's Scottish. Of course. So I'm sure. And they still have a little bit of a problem with the English... Um, <laughs> Yes, we've heard. Uh, so I, I would say north of the border, Andy Murray, south of the border, than, uh, than today, the baby. A great diplomatic answer. A very, very good one. Graham Mack, we thank you so much for uh, joining up with us here on uh, WBT here in the States. Graham Mack, thanks so much, sir. And Big Fat Ed is next on the Brad and Britt Show with some thoughts on the royal baby and more. Everyone's getting in on this. Everyone's excited about this royal birth. Derby Cathedral has created a congratulations book for the royal baby. I popped over there this afternoon and I spoke to a nice bloke, Reverend Andy Trenier. Uh, but before we had a look at the book, I had a question of my own. Did the church bells ring here last night? Yes, the church bells, we ran, we rang a special... Um, change a set of changes it's called um all named after princes and kings especially composed for last night at nine o'clock it rang because i heard them and i was actually unplugged from the internet and then i heard the church bells and i thought i better know why that is yes yeah, so yeah. whose idea was that then um i'm sure it was the dean's idea that's the correct answer <laughs> all the good ideas belong to the boss eh? Uh, absolutely yeah or yep, are owned yep. by the boss yep. anyway one way or the other so has the cathedral done that before for the royal weddings uh, for funerals any kind of state occasions we'd always uh, ring the bells we don't have any guns to fire so bells is the nearest we get i think it's cool because that's how people used to find out news and that's how i found out even though i'm connected to the world through yeah. broadcasting that is how i think it's really special when people ask me about the royal birth i can say well i found out the old-fashioned way yes, not not by getting a tweet not by getting a tweet <laughs> no by getting a ding <laughs> graham mack on bbc radio derby